<laughs> Greetings, fellow geeklings. It is I, Alex, here on um, Geek Stuff. I forgot the name of my own channel. That's not good. Today, we're all going to finally be looking at um, the other Autobot I got from, um, I believe it was the Entertainer. I do realise I forgot to put the link for, um, actually, because I got Optimus from a undisclosed uh, collector store, which I'm still trying to find the name for. So hopefully if I can get their name and their website, I'll put that down below on that video. Um, also, I am aware I haven't put any essential links uh, for the cut wires for a couple of videos. Don't worry, still on top in terms, still friends. It's just life's been extremely busy lately. Um, currently nursing a little bit of a bad back, so I'm having a couple of days off work, so hence the reason why I'm doing a video now. Um, while I have the time and um, kind of the energy, while painkillers aren't trying to knock me unconscious. But um, apart from that, I'm fine, I'm well, I'm fit. Just one of those things, old age, don't hit your 40s, kids, because it's true what they say, life begins at 40, but by the time you hit 30, all your, all your injuries, you said you never, would never plague you in old age, will catch up to you and start hurting again. In your 30s, all those broken bones, all those twisted ankles, pulled back, strained shoulders from weightlifting, general work in general, doing stupid stuff as teenagers will catch up to you. I should know I have had a broken wrist, as you can tell. <laughs> I broke my nose three times. Thankfully, I don't have many problems with that. It's just sinus issues. You're going to say, you're a geek, you, shouldn't you be getting sinus issues anyway as part of the thing? Possibly, but I also get hay fever and eczema as well, so... And a crippling caffeine addiction. <laughs> but, um, yes, um, why the hat? Oh, the hat. I've been wearing, I'm, I'm trying to grow my hair out. Um, I mean, my hair's not quite at um, microphone stage at the moment and I need a shave. And I thought, you know, go rocky on me and salt and pepper goatee. I think it goes, I think it goes in my gray eyes, I think. I think the hat goes in my gray eyes quite a bit. What do you think? So, um, on with the usual beginning part of this video and I will say this at the start of the video as well as at the end don't forget to hit the like subscribe and notification bell so you're notified when new videos are up so go ahead and roll your perception check to find out where they are and um, be part of the 100 sub club I'm hoping to try and give away do some giveaways for every 100 subscribers up until probably about 500 and then it'll probably be every however many, whenever I get a chance to do giveaways after that. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's nothing organised at this moment in time. Um, but, yeah, basically, it's a hat I ordered off of Amazon. Been needing them. I work in a chiller section. So, um, hat's kind of like, it comes off in the morning because I'm usually warm by that point from action, movement. But um, yeah, it keeps my head warm. I mean, I'm 41, so so my hair's not too bad. I see some of the grey coming through on the side there. <laughs> Show me age. So yes, this channel is not made for children. It can and will definitely contain um, moderate to mild and um, excessive swear words, and um, especially during things like Lego builds, Gunpla builds, and difficult transformations of third third and main third party and mainstream transformers. 
So today, if you haven't read the description down below, we are looking at the Takara Tomi Transformers, the movie 86 studio series Dinobot Sludge. I just really like the, the um, artwork on this bad boy. Um, it's really good. It's one of my favorites. Um, I spent some time getting used to this guy, so there won't be an unboxing on this video, but there's a little snippet of what he's doing. Uh, it's a, quite a sizable transformer. It's my biggest one yet. Um, the biggest one I've ever owned was, I had a, um, no, it was a Metroplex. It was Metroplex when I was a child, and he was about two foot tall. <laughs> he was a big boy. This guy's coming in nearly a foot tall himself, so he is big. Um, I mean, he was one of the tallest ones. I mean, he's, he's Diplodocus, you know. Uh, so, let's get on with this review. Spin the camera around, and let's get on with this. Um, you might recognize the background. I'll be using this background for all my Transformers reviews, just because it's easier, unless I get a better, something better, this will be the background, so let's get on with this. Okay, so the posability is not too bad. His center of balance is slightly off, mainly because of all of the kibble with the head. But those of you who are general, uh, um, G1 fans know that even in the cartoons, all the Dinobots had a lot of back kibble from their Dinobot form. And the price I paid for this guy was pretty, um, it was quite a lot. Um, it's a newfound respect for what my mum, I put my mum through during the 80s. Um, the only two Dinobots I actually owned at the time, uh, before I got too old, apparently, was a, an original Grimlock and a Sludge. And I remember him being a lot easier to transform than this guy. But he is fun. He's a good looking robot. He's a good representation of a comic, of a cartoon accurate model. There are some little things that I would like to have seen better. But he is a studio series and not a masterpiece. Um, yet to um, get my hands on some masterpieces. It's just a matter of getting the money together at the moment. I am um, currently cobbling some fun, uh, some bits together for my first DM in session. Screens, monster card, more more cards, etc. Like spellbook stuff. Um, but yeah, thinking on more lore, creating NPCs. I'm having a lot of fun with that. And I'll probably do an episode for that for D and D Beyond. And there'll be links for that on that episode. Um, and I probably will be looking at more Dakota Irish stuff um, as we go through Halloween and into Christmas. Um, I haven't been asked to, but um, I may see if they have any discount codes they wish to push out to help them get stock out. So let's get on with the robot. Um, by no means, this guy is not one of my favourites for playing with. He just looks cool when he's in robot and dinosaur mode. So, as you can see, he is, compared to my hand, he is a tall boy. I have a seven inch thing from palm to for the basic, I used to do arm wrestling, so it, these are things I had to know. Um, from base of here to the tip of my longest finger. Um, also, it helps for measuring up for gloves for workplaces and stuff. Like, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but they're not small. So, key features. Um, there has been no paint chip, no paint rub, which is fantastic. Um, I particularly love these little gold adornments on the feet and on the gun. Um, considering this guy came in more than my Optimus Prime. Yeah, this is not an accessory. 
I'll show you why this is going to be important. I'm using Optimus Prime's gun as a part separator for these hands. I'll do a demonstration as to why. Uh, I think this is just like an exception to the to the rule. I'll put a link down below for the shop I got it from, the Entertainer down below. Um, I mean, this is his gun. I swear he did come with a sword. I think most of the Dinobots did come with a sword. I do like the little details on here. I mean, for the price point, they could have done a launcher like the original toy. But yeah, some really cool details. I mean, the face is almost completely 100% accurate. It's not as exactly how I remember it. It's not that charismatic. It wasn't very charismatic anyway. Um, for, for one of the cooler Dinobots, you get this nice detail on the inside of his wings. And of course, all Dinobots could fly in robot mode. Whereas Swoop could fly either or, which is pretty cool. But um, yes. I think that was pretty cool. Now the, there is the kibble. There is some Dinobot kibble, which is unavoidable, unfortunately, but it fills in a nice gap that's here. They could have had the legs kind of folded up into the wings, but yeah, say some of this detail is really cool. The head sculpt on the Dinobot mode is pretty cool. We'll cover that in a minute. His posability is lacking. But it is that I mean this is loose as um, uh, I mean it is a reasonably sturdy figure apart from this wing, but um, yeah, I think it's just one of those things. I'm not prepared to gunk it up with stuff. Um, however, if other Transformers reviewers wish to do so. Then that then that is not their thing. This is their only accessory that came with sludge. Sludge no like. Anyway, um so I'm gonna get on with the contention with the hand because it's part of the thing. The hands do have a swivel, but part of the transformation is the hands disappear in. So there's kind of like a double thing you've got to do. You'll see this in the full transformation. The hand tucks in. So when you try to get the hand out and you try to pull it out, it won't come back in. So I'm having to use the hand, the gun, the handle of the gun to push it in. <laughs> this is a point where it's called me a liar. And pull the hand out and turn it around. I'm having to do that on both hands. But Apart from that, that's the most annoying thing when it comes to coming back to being a robot. Um, the foot situation into the tail is a, another um, situation that is more complicated than I feel it should be. But like I said, we'll get into that when we come to that point. So we're going to get onto posability as a whole. We've just seeing what the hands can do. Both hands swivel. The ha the head, as part of the transformation, this does come up. So you can you can look up. You can't really look down that far. Um, it's down as far as his chin hits. It does, however, look spin round. There is no side to side pivot. So he does have a pretty good. Head posability, so you can look up, kind of look around. You've kind of got to bend them over a little bit. This guy has some ungodly positions that you can get him into, and he looks like he's possessed if you put him in the wrong positions. Now, onto arms. Both arms come all the way out that far. There's a nice little fuller detail here. On the armpits, full rotation all the way up, all the way around. If these wings weren't here, I'm pretty sure he would be able to do a full 360. I can demonstrate that more in Dinobot mode. Elbows, almost double hinged. 
They could have done with something here, like, I don't know, a bit of rubber piping or something. This also translates into Dinobot mode, but the backwards bend is kind of for transformation only. There is a bicep swivel, which is stiff. As you can hear, the shoulder is on a ratchet joint, which is kind of satisfying. But yeah, the shoulders go all the way up and all the way up that way as well. So yeah, there is, I told you this is loose. If this ever does happen to you, it does. There's no pin that goes through, although I think there should be. Um, hip mobility. There is a waist swivel. There is no waist pivot, but there is a nice little waist swivel. Um, clear the arms out to do the legs. There is a healthy amount of side splits. He can do the full Jujimufu, so to speak. He can kick up that high, kick bend, full bend of the knee, a nice little toe point, toe pivot, only pivots one way, there's just a toe point, no toe tilt, you can do a little toe tilt if you really, really wanted to, but part of that is to do with the transformation, and he kicks back that far, and obviously he can, if you see fit, do a healthy side kick. Do a healthy side kick pose, which is pretty cool. There is obviously a thigh swivel, and the, the it is a nicely articulated joint. The knee does bend the wrong way, but again, that's not to do with um, thing. If you want to pose him in a position where his leg has been broken, then by all means, um, sickos, you can go ahead. So now we're going to get into size comparisons. This is where a lot of the issues come. Sometimes it feels like with some of these figures, a lot of the time, the center of mass isn't quite, there are engineering issues. There are engineering issues with the center of mass. But let's get on with the size comparisons. His brother in arms, leader series, commander class Grimlock. War for Cybertron, Optimus Prime. Fellow Transformers, the movie um, studio series Perceptor. Legacy leader class Galvatron. Legacy Hot Rod, Din Djarin. Lego Din Djarin. This is now take two. <laughs> I've already gone ahead and done the hands. I've already showed you the hands tuck in nicely. What you have to do is, I'll show you. From the trick is to get the hand out, you need to be able to fish hook that out. You could use um, a long metal thing. So when you're putting the hands in, I'll do this as the first stage of the transformation. Make sure to turn the hand like so. As otherwise the back of the fist will catch on the edge of here. And I may get some sandpaper to get rid of these little nubbins here, which I've just noticed. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do first is get the legs prepared. So, Get the legs, see this little thing here? That will come back on itself like so. Need to get these tail tips. This is where 
you start to realize how unnecessarily complicated this is. Open up the legs. And you'll notice in a minute, this is fine. That opens up, that opens up. And this unclicks from there. And then you do the same on the other side, that opens up there. So there's the first stage of the transformation. That's all you need to do with the feet, all you need to do with the tail so far. And what we'll do preemptively is move these secondary feet around turn his legs back to front. And now he looks like he's one of those weird moth things that's given birth to something out of his anus. You'll notice the back of the knees are funny shaped. So what is, is this is going to come around like so. So if I have the legs down the way, so I've got this situation going on here. So now these bits need to be clear for the tail tips to come around. But what you need to make sure of is you have enough clearance inside of here for this to come around comfortably, like so. And to bring this around and this around to hold them tips in place. So. Now that stage is pretty much done. I may have actually need to open that back up. I've got a bit over overzealous on myself there, so keep the legs dangling freely. You need the arms to be clear of everything. So this all needs to be clear of this top section here. Because what you'll find is with a little gentle tug, just a little, and just hear the little click, that will open up. And this whole assembly, this is why I say make sure everything is clear of the upper body because this needs to come around neatly as possible. So, so this swivels, this swivels on this spot here and that will come down. The head now facing that way will go round. The wings now come out again for clearance. So they need to come all the way up so they're sitting high above the body and then the legs bring that head up into that position for now lock the head into position here you'll see these raised tabs here that little raised tab there will go into those little holes there so just to keep him out of position so he's out of mischief Heads, legs come out, come round and plug in like so. The head can now come off for this situation. Now we're back on to the legs. So the legs need to sit as flush as possible. This bit needs to sit as flush as possible here for this to come round. And then this comes up like so. And then it's the same story for here. So the knee bends up. Again, this bit needs to sit as flush as possible to the inside of here. And then this bit needs to come up and round. And now it needs to come 
about here. And you need to have the legs a little bit here. So these legs, this is where it gets over complicated. Swivel these legs around so that those two toes are facing towards the head. Like so. And forgive the dog making noises in the background. Make sure that is secure. So. so now it's time to get the legs together. <clears throat> so these need to make sure these are secured and in, back into the place that they would have been when they were in the original leg transformation. So now these need to come around. So it's a lot easier than it looks. Um, this is an easy transformation, believe it or not. Um, but trying to get all this on camera without missing anything is 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 a pig's ear. So those need to sit there. Now get his hind legs. What is now his hind legs? down into position. So these bits now can pretty much near enough all conform. And you see these little pegs need to go just inside there. So you do need to have a little bit of a moment to make sure that's all in there. That sits down there. So <clears throat> Now the side wings come all the fucking way down, making sure that it clears this side. I'll show you more on this side. Make sure that leg is back. You'll see it'll come round here and then come all the way around. And it, it, this should sit underneath this gold piece here. Like so, and it should, it should, hold together there. So now all this is pretty much complete. And then by God willing, the head should connect on. And there is your robot form, uh, your dinosaur form. Nowhere really to store the gun apart from maybe on his thigh. So, so he's like a unigun. It would be cool if he had some kind of like whole system on the top there you know but um the weapon storage on this isn't great it's better when he's in robot form articulation now before we go on to um size comparisons transformation size comparisons the jaw does open and there is a tilt at the head down that far all the way up that far it's a nice little ratchet joint be careful because he will come detached from the base of the neck. So when you're manipulating the neck for posing, hold this firm. Not tight, firm. So you remember this cavity is hollow right now. So any too firm and it will crack it. Um, you can have him so he's drinking water. Although he looks like he's got an odd shaped neck. There is, again, when pole posing this neck, a pivot at the base of the gold on the neck. I do love the detail on the head. These front two legs have a, have a foot pivot and a swivel, as well as, a obviously, a hinge there. It kicks all the way around to there and it will detach. It won't detach because everything's encased in there. It's a moment in time. This is a point where you realise that the head attached to the body isn't as tight a connection as it should be. Um, it's tight, but it's not very tight. Now you get degrees of motion that way. You get degrees of motion that way. So he looks more like a dinosaur and there is that bicep pivot from the original but there is that 
thing, but there is no independence on the claws. The rear legs do go all the way around. You can have him scratching himself. You can even have him If you if you're prepared to, you could even have him going for a piss, but the the stability on that isn't great. So if you are going to do it, make sure you hold on to him. But yeah, so he does have a good side kick. But you'll, I hear you say, you can see some of the issue with the head coming loose. You can have him... If you hold him there, his center, you can see where the issue of the center of balance mass is. You can have him so he's upright, so it looks like he's going for food out of a tree. But you could also do that for a for his legendary stomp down when he makes a ground thing. There is no articulation in the tail. Posability wise, there are better dinosaur toys out there that will do better. But um for the price point, I would have liked more ease of use. I mean, they could have done screw hole covers for there. You know, I get, and for here and here, obviously, for the pin joint. But, um, yeah, there are some, there are some points that just, don't look right like you've got this big cavity here where the feet were, where these front feet tuck in. It would be more sensible if there was a, like a little flap that tucked up and then you could just like move a little rotating slidey door thing around. Um, but how many times are you going to see the underside of Sludge's belly? Not very often. So now we're going to move on to size comparisons. I'm going to have to have him kind of just to the side of the camera here. Um, so we're gonna do the size comparisons and transformation and then we're gonna crack on. We have the leader class, uh, the leader series commander class Grimlock, War for Cybertron Optimus Prime, part of the dog barking in the background. Studio series Transformer, the. Transformers the movie 86 edition Perceptor Legacy Hot Rod the equally big Legacy um, Unicron Dinjarin 